Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. Let us prepare ourselves for worship. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. We pray to you, O oh Lord, you hear us in the morning. At sunrise, we offer our prayer and wait for your answer. Our scripture reading this morning is from Acts. Now, during the Easter season, we read from Acts rather than from the uh, Old Testament. Listen for God's word to us. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it all at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had any need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barabbas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him and then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Several years ago, I went to a conference um, for all people, all pastors and several denominations that were um, part of a, a grant from Eli Lilly that looked at excellence in ministry. And so I was sent to be part of this group and um, went out to Indianapolis and met with this group. And our, our leader was part of a movement called the New Monasticism. Now, he was considerably younger than I am. And these, this group of young people had taken that passage from Acts very seriously. And so they opted to live in a communal living situation. So it was a, a, a house, a good sized house, but there were several families living there. And one of the things he talked about is how they shared in everything. So, you know, they shared in the cost of food, they shared in the cost of childcare. They, you know, some of them had better jobs than others. They provided different, um, were able to provide more and other things. Um, but it, it really was an amazing community. And my first thought was to feel a little guilty because I lived with my husband in a, a small place, but um, whatever we had was, was ours. And I thought about what really this passage means. And this passage is so central to who we are as Christians. We believe that whatever we have, is a gift from God. And it wasn't meant to be hoarded or to um, just benefit our family, but to go into the world and make sure they're there, that there were no needy among us. It was a, a beautiful thing this weekend. Um, on Saturday, almost all, we were just missing about three, but um, almost all of the children of the church did a scavenger hunt to get um, food that was um, would put together a full meal for a full Easter meal for a family who was um, food insecure. Well, the initial thought was we'd have two groups, and. <laughs> Well, um, the donations came in so quickly from the church that we didn't have even a chance 
to let others who wanted to participate, participate. So we ended up having three groups. So there were three meals, complete with an Easter ham, um, a couple of cans of vegetables, a couple of boxes of potatoes, uh, a couple of boxes of macaroni and cheese, applesauce, a cake mix, and a container of icing. So a full meal, um, as we used to call it in um, the South, a meat and three plus a dessert. What a wonderful thing for our children to realize that just as they were sitting down with them for a meal with their families, that they were providing so someone else, someone who they didn't know, was also able to sit down for a meal with their family. And that's really the purpose of this, this passage in Acts. I love the idea of the new monasticism community, and it worked so well for those younger folks who were younger than I am, who um, ended up leaving their college with um, a massive student debt. Now, I'm old enough that when I went through college and when I went through grad school, I didn't amass any debt because the little bit that wasn't covered by my scholarships was very easily in what my parents had put back to save for our, our college educations. So I was very lucky in the sense that I never had student debt. But my nieces and nephews, who, my older nieces and nephews who have all gone through college, came out with an amazing amount of student debt. And they're, the oldest nieces and nephews are in their early 20s. They will probably be well older than I am before they're able to pay off that debt ent entirely. So we're reminded that we all care di carry different burdens. And we're reminded that part of our call as Christians is to share what gifts we have so that there are no needy among us. May it be so. Amen. Let us now pray together. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life, which we have received by your grace, and the new life you give in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of compassion, witness, and service. Those who make and grow things we need. The communities in which we live. Strength and abilities to serve you today. Indications of your love at work in the world. God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others and commit ourselves to serve them, even as you have served us in Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for the church in Africa, the conservation of the soil, water, and air, those closest to us in this community, friends and relatives who are far away, the judgment to know and do what is right. God of our salvation, as the light of the morning dawns, heaven and earth sing your praise. Cause us to live and grow in faith so that we may bear good fruit for the glory of your holy realm. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Beloved, have a wonderful day. 
enjoy the nice spring weather, and I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow, Wednesday, at noon for Midday Prayer. Have a great day.